We suffered from extreme second-hand awkwardness and embarrassment watching Intel's latest presentation. Enabling enterprises to digitally transform and mainstream AI easily into their operations. A true breakthrough. Thank you. Aren't you excited? <laughs> Right, perfect. And despite talking for 44 minutes and 10 seconds prior, the first time Intel actually said anything was about halfway through its presentation and about the Intel 13th gen CPUs. And the i3-13900K is the best gaming, streaming, and recording experience ever. Let's talk about Intel's new CPUs, GPUs, and its jargon-filled mockery of Silicon Valley, the presentation itself. Thank you, Papa. Yeah. Before that, this video is brought to you by Be Quiet and the Silent Base 802 case. The Silent Base 802 got high accolades in our review for its high build quality and its versatility in both silence focused and airflow focused built. The 802 comes with swappable mesh panels or noise damped panels, so you have options for either approach. The Silent Base 802 case is able to fit larger builds as well without being overbearing and it stands out for its mechanics quality and assembly quality. Learn more about Be Quiet's new case at the link in the description below. So Intel eventually announced the 13900K, 13700K, 13600K, and their F-SKU equivalents. So the KFs, or the F-SKUs as we call them. And they also talked about the pricing for their ARC GPUs, but none of this was announced before Intel spewed several run-on sentences worth of techno jargon that means nothing to basically anyone, although we've all convinced ourselves that those words mean something. And if you think about it for too long, it makes you question what sort of self-congratulatory circle you found yourself in, and if you're actually contributing anything meaningful to the world. And here I have the Gaudi 2 Accelerator. This product comfortably outperforms the A100, ResNet 50, uh, BERT models, the June publication this year of the MLPerf uh, benchmarks. You know, and this model we're running is latent diffusion on uh, PyTorch. So what do you think, Rhea? Absolutely, those words, they bring joy. Thanks, Intel. Thanks, Steve. Intel made sure to spend ample time talking about things that mean stuff to people somewhere, and it's one of the most awkward presentations we've seen from the company yet, although this time they didn't talk about going down to the river or whatever it was they did in the last one. Recently, Mike Coker went to the river. Intel started with some overbearing technology presentations, mostly talking about things like AI and, for some reason, making it sound like a good thing that your notifications texts and general digital interruptions will follow you everywhere, forever, always. So, Rhea, your iPhone will be singing and dancing and playing with your Windows PC. Never lose focus, get all of your notifications, all of your emails, all of your texts, and be able to bring that vision. And that's the dream, right, guys? And somehow that means you'll never lose focus. I think we've already lost focus, Intel. Focus was that way and it was before all of this happened. Uh, they also transitioned into talking about how software is, quote, the soul of the machine. Didn't mention GPU drivers in that discussion. And it then ramped into the discussion of GPU pricing. Now, we noticed that it only showed NVIDIA GPUs in the GPU pricing chart, which is probably because AMD also competes on price. Intel wasn't shy of showing AMD in its CPU charts, so it doesn't seem to be just a, we're not naming them thing. This appears to be more of a, AMD is already uh, fighting at the lower price end. NVIDIA provides the largest delta, price to price, card to card, between Intel and a GPU manufacturer. And therefore, NVIDIA is chosen as the only reference point in that chart. We're just going to pretend that the GPUs from AMD don't exist. Now, in addition to all of this, Intel also revealed something really unique and competitive in a different way. The thing it revealed is its new killing squad. Here's what they look like. Anyway, after watching over an hour of Intel's presentation, trying to extract any meaning from it whatsoever, we thought we'd smash together a bunch of funny sentences that are filled with words that don't actually mean anything. And then we realized that that was the entire first 40 minutes of the presentation, and that would make this video too long. Well, you know, coffee's pretty important to me. 
right? You know, our platforms want to consume it and deliver it, and we're committed to making all this real. Are these Intel folks crazy? Yes, don't ask questions you don't want the answer to, one of our rules for writing here. So to save everyone time, we'll get into the actual news, and we're going to start with Intel Arc. Intel announced the launch date for the A770 video card is October 12th. That's the same day as the RTX 4090, and very interesting strategically. We'll get into that. Also, the price is set starting at $330 for the A770. So that's competitive. That's likely meant for the 8 gigabyte version of the card. They're gonna have two versions. One's 8 gig, one is 16 gigabytes. And there's not much else in the announcement in terms of like really anything other than uh, some details about the limited edition design that Intel's doing. Fun fact, it's not actually limited. Intel is using the words limited edition to mean we made this. It is, I, I sent them an email. I wasn't trying to be rude, but I sent an email after seeing limited edition so many times. And the question was, just to clarify, is this like the specific Intel card is limited edition or is all of ARC limited edition? Not genuinely not trying to be rude about it. I'd just seen it so much. I was getting semantic satiation about it. And Intel's response was neither. It's not limited edition. We just call it that, which is really stupid. Anyway, it's like trying to get all the marketing advantage of Supreme, except none of the limitedness. October 12th being the same day as Nvidia's 40 series is what's the most interesting here. So the question is, why would they do that? And there's really a few key answers here. One of them is that Intel is probably trying to piggyback off of what Nvidia is doing and it's able to try and capture some of that lower end market that Nvidia has, at least for now, abandoned, other than with its existing cards that's trying to purge through the channel because it has way too many of them. And that, I, there's at some level, uh, there is a type of consumer out there who will be unwilling to purchase a brand new in-box card because it's one generation old and therefore, ew, old, gross, I don't want it. And Intel's probably trying to get that person to buy this video card. Now, another reason this is unlikely, but it's one we postulated was a possibility with AMD in the past. Another reason might be they're trying to bury the launch. Not a lot of real reasons you would do that because you're launching it anyway. You might as well try and get as much money back as you can, unless it's just trying to like satisfy some kind of investor need. But normally when they need to do that, they just launch it over in South Korea or in China, and then they don't tell anyone else in the world about it and hope that it goes away. And that's not what's happening here. This is actually a global launch for everybody. So why they would do this, it does look like it's trying to, and Intel knows that Nvidia is going to generate a lot of buzz around the 4090. Intel knows that this will draw attention to October 12th. And it also knows that the 4090 is the only card Nvidia is launching right now, and it's going to be expensive in the over a thousand, well over a thousand dollar mark. So Intel gets to come in and basically play Robin Hood or be a hero and launch at the low end uh, and hope that it can ride on some of that attention. It's not necessarily a bad thing, just strategically, it's incredibly interesting because this doesn't normally happen. Although Nvidia and AMD go head to head and will launch within maybe a month of each other. I, I can't personally remember a time when they launched on the same day. And part of the reason the companies don't do that is it's not like it's out of respect. It's because they're not trying to get their own product buried by a competitor in the news cycle. So when you have launches on the same day, someone's going to get the coverage and it's probably going to be the company that will generate the most interest and also that booked the schedule first. Intel will probably get coverage on the same day. It's just they're going to be spaced out a little bit because of how YouTube works, right? So it's very interesting strategically. It's kind of a new age strategy in terms of gaming YouTube as reviewers have to play the game on YouTube algorithmically. Um, but realistically, uh, if the actual review embargo is on a different date, then it's all irrelevant anyway. So we'll see what they do. If the reviews go up earlier than October 12th, but the cards come out then, it, it, the strategy is a little different. They're just trying to capture that market. So really bizarre though, um, kind of aggressive. So it'll be fun to watch what they do to fight each other. Now the A770 
could end up being a decent value. We'll see. We obviously have one. We'll test it. We'll let you know. But a large part of the discussion is going to depend on Intel and its ability to unfuck its drivers. The Intel Arc drivers are the real F SKU, where Intel made its Arc drivers for the A380, and it's an F SKU customer. Uh, these drivers are terrible. We talked about them in one of our videos. Intel's been working on fixing this stuff. They posted this blog post noting dozens of improvements in the pipeline, and that's good. There's no change in that Intel has decades to catch up on for its competitors, uh, but Intel's also a massive company. It's an incredibly inefficient one in terms of sort of the staff versus its competition in this type of, well, in CPU plus GPU, but it is a big company and it has a lot of money. And the problem with drivers is it's so game and software dependent that as reviewers, we do our best to beat the drivers up throughout the review cycle, but ultimately, most of the problems are going to be found by customers because there is an infinite, effectively, amount of combinations of hardware and software, and it's you all who will be finding the ones that don't work. Anyway, Intel's been talking about that. They published these performance numbers for the A770 and A750 on Twitter. Uh, for what they're worth, but again, just check our review later. Custom partner versions of the A770 and A750 from Gunnier and ASRock were also on display at the innovation event. Uh, this is compiled by video cards from Cool3, XFastis, and Engadget as well. The designs range from two to three slots each, and they have two or three fans each. They seem oddly small <laughs> compared to the monstrous RTX 4090, and that's also one of Intel's kind of key differentiators here. This is a two-slot card. The last time these existed in any kind of like meaningful volume was basically two generations ago. So they've got something here. Back to you, Steve. Additionally, Intel quietly added a new A310 graphics chip to its website. This is a cut-down version of the A380 with 6x E cores, very small at graphics clocks of 2 gigahertz, and it has 4 gigabytes of memory. We have no information on price or launch date outside of Q322, as seen on Intel's ARC page. Not that ARC page, the other ARC page. Great name, Intel. Okay, let's get into the CPUs next. So the 13,000 series, it's got six SKUs. Those are the 13900K, the 13700K, the 13600K, and then there's also the F SKUs of those. Uh, so they have the KFs for each of those models. Now, first off, the flagship, the 13900K and KF, they're the same thing other than the IGP, the F SKU drops the IGP or the integrated graphics processor. That's the only real difference with it. Those are priced at $590 and $565, where the F SKU is the cheaper one. I'm looking forward to being demonetized for repeatedly saying F SKU on YouTube. The i9s have 8P cores and they run up to 16 E cores. Now, additionally, the P cores will turbo to 5.8 gigahertz maximally, and the E cores will run at 4.3 gigahertz. As a reminder, E cores are efficient cores, P cores are performance cores. There were some scheduling issues when Alder Lake or the 12,000 series first launched because of this distinction between them and Windows 10 especially. That's largely been resolved at this point though, at least with games. Now, for cache, total amounts are 36 megabytes of L3, and then for L2, they've dropped down to 32 megabytes. Next, the i7 13700K and KF are at $410 and $385 respectively. These i7s feature 8 P cores and 8 E cores, and they boost to 5.4 gigahertz max on the P cores and 4.3 on the E cores. They're running 30 megabytes of L3 and 24 of L2. We're gonna get into the differences between these and the 12 series in a second after we get through the rest of the specs, but the main one is going to be that E core count. That's what you wanna pay attention to. The P core count's not really changing. Those are the ones that are really doing the heavy lifting for things like gaming workloads, but E cores help with some multi-threading and that's what's getting increased this time. Now last, the 13600K and KF are priced at $320 and $295 respectively. The prices have gone up here. The i5s have cut down two P cores to six, but have eight E cores like the i7s do. And turbo frequencies are listed at 5.1 and 3.9 for the E cores. Uh, cache totals are 24 megabytes L3 and 20 megabytes L2. All of these new CPUs also feature official support for DDR5-5600, and they retain DDR4 support as long as the motherboard is made for it. PCIe lanes are unchanged at 20 total across the stack, 
And keep in mind that they've also got PCIe lanes running down to the chipset. Maximum turbo power is listed at 253 watts with 13900K and 13700K with a 13.6 downrated to 181 watts. Launch date for these is October 20th. That puts it about 23 days or so after the Ryzen 7000 series launch. And uh, Intel also teased the upcoming special edition of the 13900K. This is supposed to hit 6 gigahertz out of the box without additional overclocking, and it's likely a pre-binned, probably 13900KS, if we had to take a guess based on history. Now, changes. So Alder Lake, the most obvious difference here is that the Raptor Lake parts, that's the code name for 13,000 series, you're going to hear that used a lot. Alder Lake is the 12,000 series. Uh, they also refer to these as generations, but that's kind of misleading, although it's the easiest. Anyway, the biggest difference is that the Raptor Lake 13,000 series parts are running four more e-cores than their Alder Lake counterparts, and a large part of the multi-threaded performance that Intel is claiming probably comes from this. But they also have frequency uplift. So Intel is still pushing frequency. Uh, it's just that this isn't like a big process improvement thing or a major architectural jump. It's an advancement on an existing one. The next largest change versus the 12th gen is probably the turbo frequency after the e-cores. And that has the 13900K and KF jumping the most at 600 megahertz higher than the 12900K and KF. The increase between the 13700K and KF versus the Alder Lake, 12700K is 400 megahertz. And finally, the 13600K and KF see 200 megahertz higher boost clocks compared to the 12600K. And as for cost, as long as Intel's recommended customer pricing is upheld, the 13900K, 13700K, and their KFs are launching at the same prices as their 12th gen counterparts. Once you get down to the 13600 though, and this is the key battleground between Intel and AMD right now, that's the one that's increasing. This is $30 higher launch than the 12600K and KF, and Intel previously announced plans to increase pricing by 10 to 20%, but so far it looks like it's only applying it to the SKU, which is very unfortunate because the, the key competition here for Intel is the 7600X. And so they've got a 7600X at $300 that is just woefully inept in the value department from AMD once you start looking at total build cost with the motherboard and the memory and potentially the cooler cost that you're going to have with that CPU. Intel has a lot of room here to come in and sweep AMD out from under its own, uh, I guess, top-heavy stack of CPUs right now where it's 300 plus. Intel's been doing well in this camp for quite some time where it has things like the 12400, 12100F has been dominating in the low end budget but still very competent gaming market. And you can still buy those parts, but uh, with the new Raptor Lake stuff right now, none of it's been announced, which means probably a lot of that's coming out in first quarter at the earliest because that tends to be when Intel launches its follow-ups. It's around CES every year, well, every generation anyway. So very unfortunate that the 13.6 is coming up because it kind of starts chewing away at a hope for people building more affordable mid-range systems this year with this generation. You might have to go back a generation to really get a good deal on it with like a 12.4 or something like that instead. But such is the market right now. Uh, and presumably they'll launch something cheaper on this generation soon. We just don't know when. Along with the new CPUs is a new chipset. Predictably, it is called Z790. The only difference we're aware of between Z790 and Z690 is an increase in the number of PCIe Gen 4 lanes off the chipset and a little bit more USB 3.2 US, USB Gen 2x2. Two two. It's the thanks, I hate it, of USB naming. Most of the new Z790 boards from all the usual partner brands have been announced already, so you check them out on each company's website. Intel, thankfully, is keeping compatibility with the 600 series boards for Raptor Lake, which means you can upgrade from the 12th gen Alder Lake CPUs with a BIOS update, or you can buy 600 series motherboards for these CPUs if you can find one on a discount. However, if you do that, you'll also need to flash the BIOS, and this is ideally done with USB flashback or BIOS flashback, because if you don't have a previous gen CPU, you put it in a 600 board, your new one that is, and it hasn't been flashed forward because it's been sitting on a shelf for a year, it's not gonna boot. So USB flashback is something you wanna look for unless you have a previous generation CPU just sitting around 
to do the initial boot for. Uh, so Intel had some performance claims here. We don't like to cover these in too much detail because they're all first party. We'll have our own testing and we'll go through the numbers with you once we're out of embargo and we've tested everything. Uh, so you come to us for the actual sort of third party testing. But let's just get a, a glance at this and then we can use it as uh, evidence if we need it later to support um, improper marketing, which is normally how we use these numbers. So Intel is claiming that the performance of the 13900K is 15% higher single thread and up to 41% higher in multi-thread versus its own 12900K. Intel also claims a 37% improvement in performance per watt at the same 241 watt TDP of the 12900K. However, the 13900K actually has a max TDP of 253 watts. In gaming, Intel provided in-house benchmarks of the 13900K versus the 12900K, as well as AMD's 5900X and 5800X 3D, sort of. They go into more detail on it in some other slides, but in the main ones, it's just basically a hyphen on a slideshow. In this chart, the large percent improvement numbers shown are versus the 5950X, and the 5800X 3D results are shown as dark orange dashes floating above the 5950X's bar without clear numbers attached to them. Now, luckily for us, Intel actually did provide these in a separate press briefing. So in Intel's testing of the 13900K versus the 5800X 3D, the results varied depending on the title, ranging from 7% less in World of Warcraft to 49% more in Arcade Again. In between those two extremes, Intel claims advantages in some and losses in the other. As for why isn't the 7000 series on there yet, uh, it's because it didn't exist when they made this announcement. It came out like the day it was announced. So. Anyway, it's also irrelevant because we'll be doing our own testing and that's when we'll look at them both. So that's it for the Intel news for now. We have a, a lot in the works, not just testing, but additional news coverage as well. Uh, it's crazy right now. I'm really excited about it. It's been a lot of fun testing everything. We have tons of follow-ups we want to do on the AMD CPU as well. We are just completely constrained on how many videos we can cut together with the amount of time we have before the next launch hits. So anyway, check back for all that. Subscribe. Really exciting month. Tons going on here. And you can go to store.gamersnexus.net and patreon.com slash gamersnexus to help us out directly. Thank you for watching. We'll see you all next time.